it has only recently become an act. So once in a while, if I make the, the mistake of referring to it as a bill, please just forgive me and let's carry on. It's been a bill for too long. Thank you very much. I wish to welcome you to the fifth edition of the media lecture series of the Wonder Show Inca Center for Investigative Journalism. The Wonder Show Inca Center for Investigative, Investigative Journalism is a non-governmental organization with a vision for stimulating the emergence of social justice in Nigeria. And the media lecture series, which started in 2008, aims to examine the salient issues that affect the performance of the Nigerian media. And today's lecture, titled The Freedom of Information Act and the Dictatorship of Corruption and Mediocrity, which is the uh, fifth edition, will be delivered by none other than the distinguished Professor Biodun Jeifo. Professor Jeifo is Emeritus Professor of English at the Cornell University in the United States and a Professor of African and African American Studies in the uh, Department at Harvard. May I please request that Professor Jeifo come to Discussing Professor Jeffo's presentation will be three eminent men and women. I have the pleasure to invite onto the podium Honorable Abiki, Abike Tabiri Erewa, <laughs> member of the House of Representatives, representing the Pennsylvania constituency. She is a veteran broadcaster. You're welcome, Madam. Also discussing Professor Jaifo's uh, presentation will be Dr. Chidi Odin Kalu. Dr. Odin Kalu is chairman. Also to discuss the presentation is Mr. Peter Carter. Mr. Peter Carter is the Deputy High Commissioner for the, uh, the British High Commission in Lagos. I'd just like to recognize the presence of uh, Professor Ruku Shikuni, the chair of the board of the Holy Trinity Center. <laughs> and also Mr. Kako Oloron Yomi, the founder of the center. <laughs> May I now invite Professor Roko Shikuni, the board chair of the Wallace Center, Center for Investigative Journalism, to give his welcome address. Professor Roko Shikuni. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure 
to welcome everybody to this year's Wallace Regional Center for Investigative Journalism Annual Lecture. As both of us probably know, the annual lecture is in honor of Professor Wallace Regional, after whom the center is named, principally for the acquiring commitment to promotion of human rights and justice for all in its writings and actions. Particularly scholars of training has creative work. Anyone who is familiar with today's speech that speaks before Professor Devin be able to attempt to preempt it. Therefore, it's not to dare preempt our lecturer today, who will be speaking on freedom. Nigeria is perhaps the last country of its size and since the enactment of the FOI law in 2011, investigative reporting in the country has not increased substantially. Even though there has been improvement in the quality of few investigative reports that our judges have had to consider in the last two years. It is surprising that since 2011, the press and media in general have been better armed to hold public officials responsible for their actions, especially with respect to the management of public finance, yet the depth of investigative reporting has not matched the additional access that is successful struggle by the media and some friends of the media and the legislature has brought the journalists through the enactment of the FOI. From the quality of investigative reporting cases that occur, our center has recognized with awards in the last few years, it is clear that there is no absence of talent and courage within the ranks of media professionals. But there is no doubt that the ownership structure of the media, particularly many media houses in the country, has not led to general support for investigative journalism in any way near what media houses have done and still do in more advanced and increasing to encourage and support investigative reporting. I take this opportunity to call on media owners in the country, media governments or individuals or politicians, to move beyond the rhetorical fight against corruption by establishing investigative journalism and reporting units and providing adequate funds to support reporters who are willing to take the risk that this beat often involves. Investigative reporting, like forensic medicine, law and accounting, is a capital intensive and time consuming endeavor. It requires general support from lovers of democracy, particularly transparency and accountability in government. Today's lecture provides me an opportunity to find institutions that have generously come to the aid of our center over the years, especially those embassies, companies, state governments, and individuals that have contributed to our annual award ceremony or to the annual lecture series. In particular, I think we the found governments and organizations which have made donations to our center and have thus made Preparation for this year's lecture as tearless as it has been. I know how tantalizing it must be to the audience that it is our own BJ, Jeff Jefu, who is giving this year's lecture. Those who are familiar with the scholarship and intellectual activism must be itching to hear from the lecturer. But before I take my seat, I welcome in particular members of the Diplomatic Corps among us today and thank them for their support over the years. Ladies and gentlemen, our center is particularly pleased that you have come in such a large number, despite the Ramadan. We once again welcome you actually to this year's lecture. In the last four years of this lecture, it has always been an opportunity for a festival of ideas. I am sure this tradition will be built on in layers today. Thank you for listening. The World Trade Center for Investigative journalism is a non governmental organization. Yes, yes, yes. It's a woman. 
and it will be highly appreciated to support in the activities of the center. Thank you very much. If it's like So, Mr. Chairman, all protocols you be observed, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to at last be able to give this lecture. I say this because first, I was to have given the lecture last year, but could not do so for all sorts of reasons. And second, because this year, once again, other pressing engagements and commitments almost made it impossible for me to give the lecture. I say almost because in the end it was I was I was I was able to make it and for this I am deeply gratified. I don't know if the application is quite loud enough. I myself. Hello? There is another reason why I am very delighted to be giving this lecture. And this is simply the fact that the sponsors of the lecture, the Wale Shoinga Center for Investigative Journalism, is an organization whose work and vision I both greatly admire and endorse. Journalism specifically activist journalism, was crucial in the struggle for our country's freedom from colonial rule. Just as we are finding out more and more that in the long and unfolding struggles to consolidate that independence from continued foreign domination and internal misrule, anarchy, and suffering for the vast majority of our people, that tradition of journalism will prove indispensable. As a matter of fact, I make bold to say that at no time in the course of our pre-independence and post-independence history has there been a greater need for a free and vibrant, vibrant press than the present historical moment. The Wale Shoinka Center for Investigative Journalism is a leading perhaps pioneering organization for the consummation and perpetuation of this vital tradition of the press at this particular conductual moment is founded in the years and decades ahead. All modern democratic nations and societies need a free, free press at the center of which stands the kind of activist professionally mature investigative journalism that the WCAIJ WC seeks to nurture and expand in, in our country. Beyond this, the developing nations of Africa and other parts of the global south have an even greater need for a free press, for an activist, independent-minded minded journalism than the affluent liberal democracies of the global north. The 